Hey guys, how's it going? So there's this theory that's been out for a while now that essentially speculates that Ty Lee, this whole time, is actually an air nomad. Now in all honesty, I highly doubt that this is true, but I do think it is a very interesting concept. So I decided that in this video, I'm going to explore an alternate Avatar The Last Airbender timeline in which Ty Lee is actually an air nomad and is aware of the fact that she is. I think this is an interesting concept because I think this would alter the trajectory of the original storyline greatly. Because there's so many questions that arise from that. Like, would Ty Lee just outright hate the Fire Nation? Would she even become friends with Azula and Mei? Maybe she would just try to kill the Fire Lord herself. And think about how this revelation would affect Aang. He would be so happy to learn that there is an entire group of people with Air Nomad blood. Would this revelation strengthen Aang's resolve to beat Ozai? Or would it distract him from his main goal? There's just so many things to consider here, and I think that this could be a great story. So, let's get into it. Also, quick shout out to Dark Amulet for this idea. So before we get into the actual Avatar The Last Airbender time period, we first gotta come up with a new Air Nomad Ty Lee backstory. Now if you don't care about the backstory, you can just skip to this timestamp, but I think it's kinda interesting to think about and it adds a little bit more context to the main story. So the creator of this theory, or at least I think he's the creator, brought up a pretty interesting point about Ty Lee's backstory that I hadn't really thought about before. So like Ty Lee met Mei and Azula at the Royal Fire Academy for Girls. And that school appears to be like the biggest, most elite school, right? Because Mei is the daughter of a governor, and obviously Azula is the daughter of Ozai. And I think if both of them are going to this school, it's reasonable to assume that one of Ty Lee's ancestors must have been a pretty important person. So, this guy speculates that if Ty Lee were an air nomad, her ancestor would have somehow managed to escape the air nomad massacre by hiding with a high-ranking Fire Nation official. Then they had kids, and eventually Ty Lee was born. So pretty much I'm gonna build off of what he said and make a more flushed out story I'm gonna try to not spend too much time on this because I want to move on to the actual what-if scenario But again, if you want to skip this portion of the video, then here's the timestamp. Okay, let's get into it So let's say that there's a man and his name is uh, Lee great grandfatheris. Nah, I'm kidding. Let's just say his name's like, I don't know, Tashi so Tashi was born into a low-class family in the Fire Nation. He was an only child, and unfortunately, at the age of two, both of his parents passed away because of some disease. And this disease only affects people above the age of 18. So Tashi didn't die from it. Because Tashi didn't have any parents to look up to, he started to idolize the great Fire Lord Sozin since he was the ruler of the land. From Sozin, Tashi learned the importance of having power. And he felt the best way to gain power and to get close to Sozin was to become a high-ranking admiral in the Fire Nation army. So, starting at the age of four, Tashi trained day in and day out to get stronger. He knew he had to work harder than anyone else did since he could not firebend. After years of grinding away, Tashi joined the army at a young age of 14 years old. He became an exceptional swordsman and hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Being pretty small compared to most fighters, Tashi relied on speed and agility rather than strength to defeat his enemies. Due to his ability, by the time he turned 20, he became a Fire Nation Admiral. He was incredibly proud of himself. Directly ordered by Fire Lord Sozin, Tashi was given the role of guarding a newly established Fire Nation colony, and was given a hundred soldiers to command. So one day, a 19-year-old Air Nomad woman, um, I'm running out of names here, let's just call her, uh, Emily. I know that sounds really out of place, but who cares? Uh, okay, so Emily enters the... No, I, I can't do this. The name sounds too out of place. Okay, let's just call her, like, Amrita. So Amrita enters the Fire Nation colony in order to meet up with an old friend. Tashi notices her walking around and finds her extremely beautiful. So, you know, he shoots his shot or whatever, but obviously she's not going to just be with a random dude, so she rejects him. However, she's a really nice person, so she lets Tashi hang around with her and her friend, and they spend a long time talking, and Tashi learns more about air nomad culture. Tashi lived his whole life believing that power was all that mattered, and without that, you wouldn't be respected. But after hearing about how air nomad culture is, and how everyone is treated equally, and all that good stuff, 
Tashi started to develop a deep respect for it. He also started to learn about more things like how chi works and stuff like that. One day later, Amrita leaves and says goodbye to her friend and Tashi. She promises to come back and visit the both of them. When she leaves, Tashi starts to use his newly acquired knowledge of chi to develop a new style of fighting. This is where he comes up with chi blocking, and obviously he trains in this skill and eventually gets really good at it. A few weeks go by, and uh, it is now time for Fire Lord Sozin to order the genocide of the air nomads which is obviously something we're all familiar with and he asks admiral tashi and his soldiers to aid in the murder of these people once he gets the news tashi is utterly shocked he is disgusted at sozin's actions he sincerely believed that sozin wanted to gain power and with that power he would give other nations a higher standard of living however committing mass genocide on an entire nation was definitely not going to accomplish that Tashi was ordered to go to the Eastern Air Temple, which incidentally was the same place Amrita lived. By the time Tashi gets to the Air Temple, the massacre has already begun. Tashi rushes inside, although I'm not really sure how, because it wasn't really made clear how the Fire Nation soldiers got into the Air Temples without being able to fly. So let's just assume he used a dragon or something. So Tashi gets there and he runs around to find Amrita. After a few minutes of searching, he notices a Fire Nation soldier standing in front of an unconscious Amritha, getting ready to kill her. What had happened was that Amritha's parents and siblings had been killed in front of her, and due to the shock, Amritha fainted. Before the Fire Nation soldier could kill her, however, Tashi stabs the soldier with his sword. He then takes the armor off of the dead soldier and puts it on Amritha. He throws the dead soldier off of the edge of the eastern air temple so that no one can find the body with a stab wound. He then runs to Amritha and carries her on his back. The other soldiers assume that she is a wounded Fire Nation soldier that is being saved by Tashi. That soldier must be really important to him, says Fire Nation Soldier 1. Using his dragon, Tashi takes Amritha to her friend's house and tells Amritha's friend to keep her safe. As fast as he can, Tashi makes it back to the Eastern Air Temple. The Air Nomads have almost been completely wiped out. Admiral Tashi, where have you been, sir? The job is almost done here, says Fire Nation Soldier 1. Listen, soldier, you did not see me leave. Remember that. If I figure out that you or anyone else ratted me out, I'll kill all of you. You've worked under me for a while now and know what I'm capable of. I'll find a way to do it, even if I'm thrown in the boiling rock. The soldier is shaken by Tashi's threats. Don't worry, sir, I won't say anything, and I'll make sure no one else does either. Tashi runs towards the battle scene. If it's not too late, maybe I can save a few children, thinks Tashi. Unfortunately, before Tashi can do anything, the battle ends. All the air nomads have been wiped out. Once it's over, Tashi is given a large amount of money for being one of the lead admirals in the destruction of the air nomad civilization, even though he obviously didn't kill anyone. After being paid, Tashi plans to quit his job as an admiral. But if you quit, that puts Amritha at more risk of getting caught, exclaims Amritha's friend. She can come stay with me then. I have a large amount of land thanks to my position in the Fire Nation army. And obviously no one is going to come check my place, since I'm considered a Fire Nation hero. So if Amritha wants, she can stay with me. If she doesn't want to, then I guess I'll have to keep my position. Amritha smiles. I'll stay with you. So Amritha moves in with Tashi, and obviously Amritha is still incredibly depressed after what happened, but Tashi makes her feel better by trying to learn more about air nomad culture. Eventually, they start doing some air nomad rituals at home. I don't know exactly what air nomads do, but uh, I don't know, use your imagination. Eventually, they get married and have kids. Amritha teaches them about air nomad culture, and Tashi passes on chi blocking to them since he believes it is important to know how to protect yourself. He chose to teach them this method of combat because it is the only fighting style he didn't learn from the Fire Nation. So all the teachings get passed down through the generations. Okay, so now we're finally at the Avatar The Last Airbender time period. If you skip the whole prequel part, all you need to know is that Ty Lee's great-grandmother was an air nomad and she passes down air nomad traditions and the story of the air nomad genocide. Tylee's great-grandfather passes down the teachings of how to chi block. And then you might ask, how were they even able to pass all of this down? Like if someone marries the child of Tylee's great-grandparents, what's stopping them from exposing the child for having air nomad blood? So the thing is, right, you have to remember that Tylee's family is very wealthy, and they have a high societal status. Therefore, I think potential spouses wouldn't mind keeping it a secret. Plus, it would be pretty hard to prove that they were actually related to air nomads. 
Additionally, I'm sure there are plenty of kind-hearted people in the Fire Nation that do not approve of what Fire Lord Sozin did. Plus, if they did really love the person they married, they wouldn't rat them out. Okay, so like in the original storyline, Tai Lee goes to the Royal Fire Academy for Girls and befriends Azula and Mei. At this point, Tai Lee's parents have chosen not to tell Tai Lee or her siblings about the Air Nomad genocide because they feel they are too young. In fact, they're thinking about not telling them at all. What's the point of burdening them with the dark history of your ancestors? Asks Ty Lee's father. Maybe you're right, says Ty Lee's mom, but I want to keep Air Nomad culture alive. And at some point, one of them is bound to ask questions. Ever since Ty Lee and her sisters were born, her mother taught them some basic Air Nomad traditions. However, she referred to them as simple family traditions because she didn't want the kids to go around telling people that they had Air Nomad ancestry. Again, I'm not really sure what the Air Nomad traditions are, but considering they're super spiritual people, they probably had their own rituals, so yeah. Alongside the Air Nomad traditions, all the girls learn chi blocking as well. As Tai Lee gets closer and closer with Azula, she and Mei eventually are invited to the Fire Nation Palace. She goes there and meets Zuko and Zuko's mother and even gets to see the Fire Lord. When Tai Lee gets back home, her parents are enraged. You cannot go back there, commands Tai Lee's mother. But what's the problem, questions Tai Lee. The mom tries to avoid the question, but Tai Lee keeps pressing her for an answer. Eventually, Tai Lee's mom reveals the truth about her heritage and tells her about what the Fire Nation did to the Air Nomad civilization. Tai Lee is aghast. That's way different from what I learned in the history books, thinks Tai Lee. I didn't tell any of your sisters about this. I think you all are far too young to learn about the truth, but I had to tell you because I cannot stand you being friends with a descendant of the man who ordered the genocide of our people. Let's just keep this between you, me, and your father. I don't want anyone else knowing. Tai Lee nods her head. She is experiencing a lot of different emotions right now but a part of her is kind of happy. This whole time, Ty Lee felt as if she got no attention from her parents because she felt she was part of a matched set. Now that she has this quote-unquote special connection with her parents, she feels more loved in a way. Even though she was told not to, Ty Lee still goes ahead and tells Mei about her ancestry. She does this because they're both really close, and now Mei is like Ty Lee's only real friend. That's the only interesting thing I've heard in my whole life, responds Mei. Nice. As Ty Lee goes into detail about the evil misdeeds of Azula's ancestors, Mei and Ty Lee start to realize that Azula is pretty messed up herself. Whenever I did a new acrobatics trick, she would always push me over, exclaims Ty Lee. Mei nods. She would always try to intentionally put me in awkward situations with Zuko. Zuko's not like his sister, though. He's much nicer. He might even hate his father's side of the family more than you do. The only good thing that came out of all of this is that my parents finally are giving me some kind of attention. I have so many siblings and it feels like I have to compete for my parents' love. I just wish there was more I could do. That way my parents would truly be proud of me. Ty Lee's eyes widen. I know, I'll try to convince the Fire Lord to honor our Air Nomad heritage. I'll get him to apologize. If I pretend to be friends with Azula, I can get close to the Fire Lord and talk to him. Are you crazy? He's not gonna listen to you. If he finds out you're part Air Nomad, he will murder you and your entire family. We should still pretend to be Azula's friend, though. I don't know what she would do to us if she figures out we don't want to be friends with her anymore. Ty Lee frowns. She knows Mei is right, but she is still determined to have her Air Nomad heritage honored by the Fire Nation. Now, obviously, part of the reason why she wants this is to get more attention from her parents. But she is also doing this to get justice for the Air Nomads. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. So anyways, the years go by and Mei and Ty Lee continue to hang out with Azula. Now obviously Ty Lee is hiding this fact from her parents. She has to sneak around whenever she goes to Azula's house. Actually, it's not really even a house. It's more like a castle. But anyway, she finds her way around it. And her parents never find out. And honestly, her parents don't even have time for her. They have like six other kids to worry about. One day in her final year of schooling, um which I don't even know when that is because I don't know how long people in the Fire Nation stay in school for. Because like Azula's 14 and she's never in school and the same thing applies to Mei and Zuko. But then Aang went to Fire Nation school and he's 12 so I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to assume Ty Lee's like 12 at this point. So anyways, one day in her final year of schooling, Ty Lee is chilling at Azula's castle. She's about to quickly run back home after hanging out with Mei and Azula. But as she is running back, she runs into Fire Lord Ozai. Oh hey, you're my daughter's friend. 
Are you enjoying your stay at the Fire Nation Palace? Ozai's a hotel concierge in this timeline. Tylee smiles. Oh, it's been great so far, thanks. This is the first time I've actually had a conversation with the Fire Lord. Thanks, Tylee. The only thing Tylee can think about when she sees Ozai is the story her mother told her of the Air Nomad genocide. I want him to acknowledge the sins of his ancestors. Thanks, Tylee. I want him to apologize. Who knows? Maybe he's different from his grandfather. It's possible he could be feeling guilty about it. Maybe if he learns I have Air Nomad blood in me, He'll be relieved because he would finally have a chance to atone. But when I brought up this idea to Mei all those years ago, she told me not to do it. So what should I do? Hey, Fire Lord Ozai, can I ask you something? Says Tylee. Sure, what is it? What happened to the Air Nomads? In history class, they kind of glossed over that portion. Why are you interested in this? You're not part Air Nomad, are you? No, of course I'm not. Ozai laughs. Don't worry, I'm just messing around. Every single Air Nomad was murdered by the Fire Nation. There's no way any of those weaklings would survive our wrath. Tylee gasps. What? Fire Lord Sozin ordered them all to be wiped out. Why? The Avatar was the greatest threat to the Fire Nation, and you must do everything you can to completely destroy your enemy. And now, he and his people are no more. Just what I would expect from my grandfather. Ozai bursts out laughing. Tylee's eyes widen. This makes me sick, thinks Tylee. Let that be a lesson to you, girl. The weak always perish, and that's a good thing. Weak people do not deserve to live in this world. Tylee gasps. It was nice talking to you, says Ozai as he walks away. Tylee runs as far away from the Fire Nation palace as she can. She sits on the ground. Tears are streaming down her face. There's no way anyone can be this cruel, thinks Tylee. He has to pay, but there's nothing I can do. He's too powerful. There's no hope. After her talk with Ozai, Tylee feels like there's no reason to stay in the Fire Nation. When Tylee's parents felt confident that Tylee wouldn't tell anyone, they went back to treating Tylee like she was part of a matched set and kept comparing her to the rest of her siblings. On top of all of that, Tylee couldn't bring herself to even look at Azula after talking to her father. As Tylee felt that Azula shared some of the Fire Lord's personality traits. Tylee ends up running off to the circus, and for the next two years, Tylee has the time of her life. She feels free from the burden she was carrying, but in the back of her mind, Ozai's words still ring in her ears. Now, while Tylee is in the circus, we obviously have things going on with the Aang gang and Zuko. So, as of right now, nothing has changed with these two groups. Like, everything that has happened in Avatar The Last Airbender happens the same way. Aang is saved by Katara and Sokka, then he figures out what happened to his Air Nomad homies, he then learns about what his mission is from Avatar Roku, then a whole bunch of stuff happens, and there's the Siege of the North thing, and obviously Aang and the squad win thanks to Godzilla Aang, and the Fire Lord orders Azula to capture Zuko and Iroh. So, like in the original series, Azula goes to ask Tai Lee for help. What is she doing here? Thanks, Tylee. I haven't seen Azula in two years. Brings back a lot of bad memories. Tylee, it's so great to see you, smiles Azula. Oh my gosh, Azula, it's been so long, exclaims Tylee. Wish it were longer, though, says Tylee under her breath. I need your help with something. It's an important hunting mission. I'm sure it'll be more worth your while than spending your time at a dump like this. Leave this place? The place that gave me joy for the past two years of my life? This is the most fun I've ever had, and you want me to give all that away just to please you? I'm never returning back to that place, thinks Ty Lee. Oh no, I'm sorry, Azula. I'm enjoying my time here a lot. I finally found my calling, you know. I appreciate the offer, though. Okay, that's fine. I understand. Thank you, Azula. Who knew Azula could be this understanding, thinks Ty Lee. What did she even want from me? Must have been pretty important if Lord Ozai sent his own daughter. Oh no, what if they found out my mom is part Air Nomad? Is Azula here to capture me? I mean, there's no chance that could happen, right? Maybe if I ask her some questions, I can get a clue on what's going on. Hey Azula, says Tylee. What kind of mission is this? I mean, why would your father send you of all people? It must be pretty important, huh? Well, I have to go capture my brother and my uncle. Whoa, your brother and your uncle? What for? You've missed out on a lot. My brother Zuko got banished for being an idiot. My father has made him look for the Avatar, and apparently Zuko found the Avatar, but 
failed to capture him. And well, my uncle is a traitor, but that's a long story. Wait, he found the Avatar? I thought the Avatar was killed by the Fire Nation. So did I. Turns out he lived. He froze his body for a hundred years, so he's biologically still 12 years old. He's pretty easy to spot since he's the only Air Nomad alive. He's got that weird arrow thingy on his head. Air Nomad? Thinks Ty Lee. I'll come with you, exclaims Ty Lee. I want to see this Avatar guy. Oh, wow, that's great news, but why do you want to see the Avatar? I thought you found your calling here. I don't know, he just sounds so interesting. Anyways, I'm ready to leave right after my show. Oh, okay. That's strange, thinks Azula. But Ty Lee's always been a weirdo. Ty Lee walks away with a big grin on her face. Maybe there is hope, thinks Ty Lee. Anyways, I'm gonna stop it right there. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. So I know Ty Lee may sound a little bit out of character, especially towards the end, but you have to remember that this isn't the same Ty Lee. She's been through a lot, which has caused her to mature quite a bit. Still, I'm going to try not to stray away too much from the Ty Lee we all know and love. I'm going to get started on part two right away. I don't anticipate this series will be as long as my top series. In fact, I think part two will be the last part. So yeah, I apologize for the delay in coming out with this video, by the way. I just got pretty busy. Um, I really appreciate all the suggestions I've gotten for future videos. I've gotten a lot of interesting ideas from all of you, and uh, I read all the comments y'all posted on my last video, which should be taken down by now. I should have responded to all the comments, but I might have missed some if you post them kind of late. But don't worry, I have screenshots of all of them so I don't lose out on all of your interesting ideas. I'm actually probably going to make that a regular thing and post updates to my channel from time to time. Those videos will only be up temporarily like the last one, so if you want to be kept in the loop, I would recommend subscribing with notifications on. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.